Well, Rod, we're here on one-on-one, -on -one, longest running college show in New York sports, and we're honored today to have Rod Blomberg on the show. I, I want to let you introduce yourself because I want to know what it is that you specifically love being remembered for in the baseball community. Well, in 1973, I was... Well, no, no, no. Let's go back. Uh, I was a number one draft pick in the 67, 67. I was number one draft pick in 67 by the Yankees. And I had an opportunity to go any other place in basketball or football and go to any college that I wanted to go to. But the only way that I would sign to play baseball would be the Yankees. And fortunately, the Yankees did not have some good seasons. They're owned by CBS. And uh, I got drafted number one by the Yankees in 67. And that was a no-brainer for me. I signed right off the bat. The reason why, to be honest with you, to play up in New York, I'm a Jewish Southerner. And to come up to play with all my family up in New York City where all the Jews were. And I wanted to go to every delicatessen that I can uh, that I can go to, and you know I love it. And during my seasons playing up in New York, I think I made every delicatessen up around this area, and I, I found some great ones. And I found the pastrami's and the corned beefs and the half sours and and the mustard and the ketchup and the you know and the Dr. Browns and the cheesecakes. We don't have that down south now. You know, if I want to get a pastrami, I would have to go uh, 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 to uh, Hebrew National, get some pastrami and to some corned beef. But I didn't have it carved like I did up in New York. That was the best of the best. This is the type of history we're here for, Ron. It's, it's great to hear. What's the best uh, New York City deli then? You know what? I lived up in Riverdale. And, you know, that's like 98% Jews up there. And I used to go to a deli down there called Liebman's. And uh, when I was living there, I used to go there every single day before the game. And I used to get my pastrami. I never got a sandwich. I always used to got a, get a platter. I eat pastrami, corned beef, and brisket. And had my potato salad. But the best... I'm just telling you, and people will uh, disagree with me, but my closest friends, who I became the best of friends with, who uh, Thurman and I uh, frequent, we did uh, almost every night after a game, we went down there to eat. Uh, the greatest matzo ball soup in the world, the greatest, was a stage deli on 7th Avenue, right across the street from the Sheraton. And unfortunately, they closed up uh, a, a few doors up above was the Carnegie. And I never went to the Carnegie much, you know, but the Stage Daily, they're the best of best. They're my dearest friends, and I miss them so much now. And the only place that I actually, uh, 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 when I go back to Old Timers Day, you know, it's really hard to find a deli. You know, I, I, I've been to Katz's uh, a few times, uh, but it's, it's too big for me. And I don't like to wait in line. I like to just sit right. down and, and have all the food, you know, be uh, brought to me. And But uh, uh, and then I have to go all the way downtown. Or I go down to the 2nd Avenue Deli. Or I used to, uh, I don't even know if it's open on Columbus Square. Uh, they used to have a place called Artie's. And, uh, but nowadays, uh, you know, I mean, they don't have that. They have the little sandwich places where you go into and, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, they got their rest, little restaurants and they got their, you know, it's like a, uh, 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 you, you wait in line, you tell them you want this and this and this, but it's not like the delis. It's not like the delis, it, but New York delis are the best, but all the restaurants in New York were the best. And, you know, Art Shamsky is probably one of my closest friends. And, you know, I don't know if you know, Art, he was 1969 Mets and uh, of course, he was with the Mets for many, many years, and he's one, probably one of my best friends. And Indeed. we talk almost every other day, and uh, he lives up in New York. He's down in Florida now, but he's coming back to New York. Because ah. he, said, uh, uh, he said, I got to eat this food up in New York. 
uh, I said, are you going to be able to eat all your food in New York and eat outside? He said, well, it's just beginning to open up a little bit. I could go into restaurants now and eat. But uh, living down south, it's it, we live in like a different world. You know, I mean, it's uh, uh, we've been open almost about 75 to 80 percent for about over a year now. And it's a lot different where we are. But we don't have the restaurants like New York, of course. But uh, um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, oh, hope, fortunately, uh, I hope to be coming up to New York and uh, maybe to be in a baseball game. Uh, I do a lot of stuff with the Yankees. I do right. a lot of meet and greets up there. Uh, a guy named Andrew Levy is involved with all the suites up in New York uh, with the Yankees. And uh, he brings all the older ball players up there like a David Cohn and uh, Goose Gossage and a Mickey Rivers and Roy White. History. Sparky. Yeah, and it's wonderful. And, and you know, usually we would have uh, the old timers day uh, in July. Of course, we're not having that this year. We didn't even have it last year. But, you know, but uh, it's going to come back. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting invited again. I've been there old timers day for about, I think, about 18 years, 18 times. And uh, it's the greatest of the greatest. And I know you're a Met fan, and I know I'm talking to a guy from Boston, and he's a Boston fan, but there's no other better team in the world than the New York Yankees. And the New York fans are the best of the best. And when you put that Yankee pinstripes on, and when you play in Yankee Stadium, when I did, the real Yankee Stadium, not the not the new one where uh, Jeter built, I was there when uh, Lou Gehrig was there, and Babe Ruth was there, and Mickey Mantle was there. And I was there when the real Yankee Stadium was there on 161st and uh, River Avenue. And you're going to school down in Fordham, up in Fordham. You know where that is. Yes, so, sir. You know, I'm at the best of the best up there. And, you know, when, when we got to play and put that pinstripes on and got to put that Yankee, pin, uh, Yankee uniform on and got to play in front of the greatest Greatest fans in the whole world. They're the best. They're the best of the best. And uh, it is, it's nothing like it. And they're my family. And the good part about it is really, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you that uh, I do so much. Well, I did so much stuff up in New York and being Jewish and being very, very much involved with, in Judaism. And I, I'm very, very a proud Jew. And uh, and I think I went to everybody's bar mitzvah and bat mitzvah and everybody's wedding. And I lit everybody's candles. And, I love it. Uh, from the Hasidics to the Orthodox to the conservative to the reform. I was related to everyone, everyone in New York City. And the good part about it was I was a role model for a lot of people. And th that made me feel very, very good because even to this day, now I'm 72 years old. I'm an old man now. But I could go back to New York and they all hugged me. And, you know, they, my grandfather said, you're the best. You're the nicest guy. You're so proud to be Jewish. I am. I'm very, very proud. And I'm very, very proud to uh, represent the city and to represent my faith. And uh, being a Jew and living in New York City was the best of the best. And to, and, and to put that Yankee pinstripes on. Incredible. You spoke a lot about being a Yankee and, and being a, a Jewish Yankee and how incredible and just authentic your experience was. Speaking of authentic, you are the designated hitter of MLB history. You are the first DH ever. And I simply wanted to ask you, are you happy that you broke the game of baseball? I didn't just break it. I screwed up the game of baseball in 73. And that was the greatest thing in the world. And I tell myself now, I'm not the designated hitter. I'm the designated Hebrew. And that's ah. my, that, that was my first book. And it was a very successful book. And, you know, and, and all the Jews bought it and it was great. And I gave all the proceeds back to the, but back to charity and stuff. And I was very, very happy and proud to do that. But uh, uh, yes, you know, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, in 73, when I became the first DH, I had no idea it was going to affect baseball this much. Uh, I thought it was going to last a, a year at the most. I, would, uh, I consider myself uh, a designated uh, pinch hitter. Uh, that's what I felt like. 
uh, had no idea that 48 years later, it still, uh, uh, it still has not been universalized. The National League, your Mets never uh, uh, adopted yet, but they will next year. Uh, we got, uh, 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 you know, uh, oh gosh, uh, David Ortiz going to wind up uh, uh, being, you know, into the Hall of Fame. We got Edgar Martinez, who went into the Hall of Fame, uh, what was it, two years ago, and he was a first. And right. uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's it's... 50% of people love it, 50% of the people like it. And that's why it's such a talking point. It's so great. You know, the DH, this, this is the only rule in, in the game of baseball that I think has been adopted extremely well. You know, I mean, now you, you can't slide into second base. That's terrible. You can't slide in the home. Uh, now, you know, I mean, you got to run at second base on an uh, extra inning game. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, you got the relief, you know, I mean, there's so many changes in the game of baseball that I do not like. You got the shift. Uh, you got everybody playing as uh, uh, right field. Uh, you know, I don't know, have any idea, you know, why they don't bunt the ball to third base or, you know, bunt the ball to first base. So you're a purist, a baseball purist. Not a purist. But wait a second. If ah. I was a purist, I wouldn't like the DH. But I like ah. I, I like something. I see. You got to look at basketball. All basketball has a three-point uh, shoot, you know, a shot, okay? Football has, uh, if you go into uh, a second overtime, I believe, uh, you have to uh, go for two points. You know, that's good. I, you know, I think that's excellent. Those are the small little points. But the DH, you know, the, uh, let's be honest. The hitters cannot hit. Uh, it's, a, it's a wasted A-B. Uh, these guys nowadays are being trained, uh, being from Little League to high school to college to uh, majority of the minor leagues. They don't hit. They have a DH. They don't even know how to pick up a bat. They don't even know what a bat is. You know, I mean, if they do, do get up to bat, they don't bunt because they don't know how to bunt. So, and people say purists, you know, the, the strategy is they don't have the strategy. It's no strategy in, you know, being having a pitcher uh, hit because they they don't do anything. It's no bunny now. It's no delayed steals now. It's hardly any steals now. And, you know, the game of baseball is a home run or a strikeout. Let's be honest. And, you know, every time I look at the, uh, the uh, sports in the morning when I'm working out riding my treadmill, they show just home runs after home runs after home runs. That's all they show. And you know what? That's how they make their money on home runs. And they don't even look at strikeouts as being negative. Back when we played, if you strike out with the man on third base, they'll bring that up to you at uh, uh, negotiation time. Well, you left a man on third base and you struck out. You know, I mean, you don't have a comeback. But nowadays, they don't even look at batting averages now. They just look at home runs. And the name of game of baseball and how I look at it is getting more runs than the other team. Now, if you have to uh, uh, steal, you have to have a delay steal, you have to bunt, you know, I mean, small ball. Billy Martin did it, uh, Ralph Howe did it, Joe Madden uh, for the Tampa Bay uh, uh, Rays. Now, you know, he's, uh, uh, where I uh, forgot where he is. I think he's with the Angels maybe. Yes. But anyway, uh, you know, he's, you know, I mean, why do you think the Rays win? Why do you think they, you know, I mean, they, they play real baseball. They first and third you. They don't wait, you know, for the seventh inning. You're losing uh, four to one, and you, you got to get a three-run home run to tie it, and you hope you get another home run in the last inning. But uh, the game has totally changed. I hope it goes back. Uh, George Steinbrenner, if he was, uh, uh, he probably rolling over in his grave watching the game of baseball now. And uh, after double days, the same way. But it'll go back. You know, I, I think the fans are getting tired of it just to see everybody's hitting home runs. You, you might as well just hit off the tee and you'll see how far you hit the ball, you know, so people don't get injured. But, hey, it is a game of baseball. Uh, I got to play it at the best time in the world. Uh, you know, I mean, it was real baseball. And I go back to the stadium. I still think it's real baseball, but I know it's not.
And it's, I know it's a major change, but you still see the same fans and they are the same great people. And that's what makes baseball for the fans. Now, before you hop off, we just ask real quick about your book, The Captain and Me, on and off the field with Thurman Munson. Could you just tell us about your relationship with him and, you know, what a, a great teammate he was for you and mentor for the game? Well, you know, I should talk about Carlton Fisk with you, you know, I mean. Uh, <laughs> you didn't write a book, a book about Carlton Fisk. I know that. I don't want to write a book about Fisk. But <laughs> let me tell you about Thurman, Thurman was my roommate for five years. And he was the best of the best. Uh, I signed in 67, uh, number one draft pick in the country in 67. He was the number one draft pick in 68. He signed out of college. I signed out of high school. We met in 69 down in spring training. And we had three things in common. We love to fish. We love to play golf. And we love to eat. So I told him right off the bat, I knew here's a guy, uh, a blue collar guy from Canton, Ohio. Had no idea what delicatessen food was. You know, having spring training in Fort Lauderdale, being able to go down to Miami, hey, you can't beat that. So you had all the delis down there. So I introduced them to matzo ball, pastrami, corned beef, half sours, and Dr. Brown's, and the good uh, Jewish mustard, and the cheesecake. And uh, uh, so he loved all that stuff. I mean, he loved it. Whenever we had, whenever we went back into the city, we always had to eat at the stage deli. That was our place of the place. And, uh, uh, and he used to take me and he said, I'm going to take you to the greatest hamburger place in the world. You know where it was? White Castle. There's one right down the street. I know that. I'm just telling you. There's a White <laughs> that's, Castle. Come on. That's yeah, like, I'm, I'm going to take you to get a New York City slice and you walk into a Sabaros. Oh, oh man. no, no, no. It was, hey, but back then it was a White Castle. That's the only thing we could afford, a nickel for a hamburger, you know. You know but, that's a deal. Oh, yeah. So we went in there and uh, he introduced me to that. But we became the best. You know, let me tell you something. You know, I'm trying to do everything I possibly can to get Thurman uh, uh, elected to the Hall of Fame. He's been right. uh, uh, he's been uh, every single year they give him less votes because the writers did not like him. Let's just be honest. You know, he was a dirty type of guy, not dirty player, but, you know, he never shaved. He, you know, always went out on the field. He had ketchup on, and mustard on his uh, uh, uniform because he always wound up eating a hot dog. Uh, he was behind. He was he was a rough type of guy. Never he never liked writers, and the writers didn't like him. They were afraid of him, so they never put him into the Hall of Fame. They never elected him. So because it's new now, he's going to have to go into the veteran committee now. There's a lot of new people, and what I'm trying to do is. Uh, the captain in me has been number one, okay, and for the last month. Uh, the book has come out a little bit over a month ago. It's been number one in Amazon uh, twice. It's number 12 now, I think, number 12 uh, today. And that's great. It's selling thousands and thousands of copies. And you know what? The book is not a baseball book. I don't know if people have ever seen uh, – uh, uh, bang the drum slowly. Bang the drum slowly was like a love story. And this is a story where uh, your catcher uh, had cancer and you had a pitcher that was a starting pitcher that took care of the, uh, the catcher who had cancer. Myself, because I was injured quite a bit, Thurman took care of me. Where wow. the ball players uh, 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 jumped on me a little bit and saw me in the training room and they sort of stayed away from me. I was like... Uh, uh, st make sure he stay, uh, they stay away from you. And Thurman really gave it to these guys. And these guys uh, respect Thurman. Thurman was a team captain. Thurman was the best of the best. Thurman was a leader. He had the it factor. He needs to be in the Hall of Fame. He will be in the Hall of Fame. And I'm going to do everything I possibly can. And Diana wrote the forward of my book. And she refuses. To, she refused to write the forward of any a uh, 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 Thurman Munson's book, except mine, because we're so close. And the book is doing unbelievable. People will love this book. And I had have, I have 500 books I purchased, and I'm down to like 10, uh, 10 books now, that's all. And I got need more books. But, you know, people love the book. And if you want to get the book, I'm going to tell you where to get. You can go to Amazon, number one. Uh, if you want my signature on the book, and that's what a lot of people are doing, you go to Ron Bloomberg 
Now, Bloomberg is 1-0. It's not like Mayor Bloomberg that has two O's. It's ronbloombergyankees.com. And it's a great book. I'll sign it for you. Put whatever you want in the book. It's great. And, you know, I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, y'all, I don't know if y'all read the book, but you going to have to get the book because you'll love it, the guys. And, you know, even though being a, a, a Met fan and a Red Sox fan, you want, you're going to want to put Thurman into the Hall of Fame. Believe me, just like all the Yankee fans, they're going to put him into the Hall of Fame. Love it. Ron, it, it was such an honor to hear from you today about yourself, your career, about Thurman. Um, just great perspective and, and incredible to hear from you. We thank you so much for joining us on One on One. For Chris Persianen and for Jack Roche, we thank you again very much and stay tuned as we'll be back after this break.